Alright, moving on to the second set on La Mancha, which I believe Zero thumbed down as used for a double map. And I think that Flash thumbed down Dante's Peak for the same reason, but not Monte Cristo. Here we go. Except, down at the 8 o'clock position in red, scouting up is Zero. That means at cross positions and teal at the 2 o'clock position is Flash. Flash. Now, the last game was so exciting that I actually didn't get to 80% of the stuff I wrote down on this little paper here. My little research paper. Uh, it feels like I'm in college again. So, but why don't I tell you why this matchup is so important? Because we could be sitting in on history tonight. Possibly. Flash may tie Nada for the highest number of individual league wins for a single player. Six titles. That is the record that Nada holds. Uh, three OSL wins and three MSL wins. Golden Mouse, Golden Badge. And Flash does have a chance to tie up that record. Being pretty much the only player who could, besides Jadong. I think that Jadong might be getting up there. Yeah, he is getting up there. He has about five titles as well. Both Flash and Jadong have five titles and a chance to tie that record. But that would be insane. We could be witnessing history tonight. But Flash is playing with a handicap. Flash is playing with a handicap, and he's microing and doing an interview at the same time. Man, that is just awesome. Uh, true ultimate weapon. That was a short interview, though. Noob. It's okay. Flash is playing with a handicap. As I said, he has a wrist injury that has been getting progressively worse. He's been talking about this a little bit in interviews. But he's kind of been sending mixed signals about it because in an interview after his game against Hydra, he said that his wrist injury was getting terrible and he would have to eventually get it taken care of by a doctor. But in the pre-finals interview that I read, he said that he plans on being a pro gamer for a very long time and his wrist has been getting better. So who knows what the hell is up with his wrist. But uh, there is some precedence here of a player forcing to retire because of a wrist injury, a dominant player re retiring because of a wrist injury, and that is I Love U V, who uh, I believe fell down in the shower or something ridiculous like that, and his wrist was injured to the point that he just couldn't play anymore. Could not play anymore, so he bowed out. But bowed out as one of the top players ever in the sport. He was one of the most dominant Terran players ever but he was taken down by a wrist injury. So I think that scared a lot of people. People um, When Flash was doing his interviews, coming out with these interviews, people were saying, oh my god, Flash, does Flash have very little time left as a player? But I don't know if that's the case or not, since he's been sending so many mixed signals about this thing. So I hope that Flash doesn't retire anytime soon, and doesn't get uh, surgery on his wrist anytime soon, although I feel weird saying that. It feels a very selfish thing to say that I hope that Flash does not get surgery on that he needs on his wrist. I feel bad about saying that, actually. I hope he does get uh, surgery on his wrist, even if it means he, ha he would have to bow out of the sport for a temporary amount of time. But as we've seen in the past, bowing out for a temporary amount of time can mean all the difference in the world. But okay, let's focus on this game a little bit more. Didn't mean to scare you so much there with that Flash uh, wrist injury thing. Uh, even with his wrist injury, Flash dominated, completely dominated Hydra, so I don't think we have anything to worry about in the immediate future. But Flash is already getting up his academy, he has his second base going, and he has kind of a wall-off, actually a complete wall-off, I believe, at his front, since he has a barracks out there uh, between the two supply depots, I, I believe that is a complete wall. On the other side, Zero is going for a pretty standard opening this time around, not going super greedy opening this time. Those greedy type of builds usually don't work against Flash, I've found. Um, yeah, when you try to econ battle Flash like that, try to get a higher economy going, it's very difficult to do. Flash is a very econ, macro-focused player, and he's extremely good at multitasking. So those types of builds generally don't work. Because Flash, he does have excellent scouting, and he'll know when to attack, when to take down a base, and how to do it. 
So I'd say the best course of action for a Zerg to take against Flash is to be aggressive. But Zero is going for a fairly standard opening um, with a Mutalist, I believe. Since he's building up his lair, he has his three hatcheries going. Flash is building his second barracks on the other side, and the observers are pointing out that he does not have the STEM upgrade going on his academy, but he does have the plus one upgrade going at the engineering bay, and he has the en engineering bay up pretty early, too, to get up his turrets. That is actually a very early engineering bay, so he'll have plenty of time to get those turrets um, once he has the plus one attack. But that was his number one priority for this build, I think, was going for the plus one attack for the Medic and Marines. So building another barracks getting his third barracks up now. He has one at the front, now he's building two inside of his base. So this will be a pretty aggressive opening from Flash. He's gonna be able to get out a lot of troops instead of turrets to fend off uh, a Mutalist attack. And there's a Spire coming up for zero, which means that Mutalist will be on the way. Oh my God, Flash going for <laughs> five barracks. Man, Flash, all creepy, inflatable Flash in the audience indicates that Flash is going to go for a timing attack, a very aggressive opening for Flash, and Flash just seems to want to end the games early today because he is going for some ridiculous stuff, very non-Flash-like, but of course he does have a second base, trying to fend off these Zerglings, he does have his Marines and his Medics in a pretty good arc there, well not an arc, but a line to keep them protected. So I don't think the Zero will be able to do a Zergling run by or anything like that, but Zero cannot keep uh, losing Zerglings because he's going to need every single one to do a pincer attack of uh, Flash soon. Since Flash, he's going for five barracks, it's a ridiculous amount of barracks, so he's going to be extremely aggressive. He's going to push forward with a couple control groups of Medic Marines, and it's going to be painful if Zero does not scout this. It's going to be probably not too difficult to scout. If he runs back and forth with the Zerglings long enough, he's going to eventually see an enormous amount of troops. Um, and at some point, Flash is probably going to lift off. Oh, he is lifting off his barracks right now, which means he might push out soon. Zero is going to have to keep on the scouting. I believe he lost a bunch of uh, Zerglings there. I saw a lot of pools of blood out front of the natural expansion. But he is going to have to keep running up and down, scouting, and seeing how many troops that Flash has. He's coming up right now with his Mutalisks. But even with these Mutalists, they could be in trouble once the plus one upgrade gets done extremely soon if he doesn't already have it. Has a stem now, so he's pushing down. Uh, he might already have the plus one attack. The observers are pointing out he does have plus one for the Marines. So this is going to be an extremely powerful push. And Zero's got to build some sunken colonies. He's not going to be able to survive without sunken colonies, I believe. It is the typical Zerg approach these days versus Terran to try to go without sunken colonies as best as you can. But as you saw in the last game, they were critical to defending. And sunken colonies will be critical to defending Zero, I believe. Unless he can get an excellent pincer attack going. But I just don't see a way he's going to be able to tackle this many troops. Pumping off of this many barracks is going to be insane. As the plus one upgraded Marines rip into the Mutalists. The Mutalists aren't even going to be able to touch the Marines without Zergling support. And look at this. Huge amount of reinforcements coming out for Flash. At the same time, he's going to wait for those reinforcements. And then he's going to try to push the front. And it's going to be insane. Oh man, he has six barracks pumping as he's going straight into his factory off of these two bases. So Flash is going to try to get an enormous amount of damage done. I see oh, how much damage he can get done if he can't do the entire thing. But now Zero is coming in with a lot of Zerglings, losing most of them. But taking down about half of the troops, Zero takes down half of these troops. But still plenty left just because Flash is pumping from so many barracks. Ridiculous amount of barracks for Flash, supported from these two bases. And because Flash is working off of two bases, I mean obviously a Terran player can work off of two for a long time. But uh, he's going to drain his economy pretty quickly with the amount of barracks he plopped down. So he's got to get a lot of damage done. He's got to push forward, get a lot of damage done, and that's exactly what he's going to do now that he's coming in with even more reinforcements. I'm not sure if Zero's going to be able to cope with this, actually. Zero has put down his third base, but he, as I said, he doesn't really have any... Okay, now he's finally morphing the Lurkers. The Lurkers going to be able to help him a lot. If he can protect them, he has a Lurker there very much in danger as Flash is surrounding that egg. He, he will be able to take down this egg given enough time, so Zero's got to come in here with his Mutalist, take down these Marines so they do not snipe that Lurker. Third base in jeopardy now as Flash has snuck three Marines into that 9 o'clock base. The, the Lurker survives, though, so that is very important. He's got to get that Lurker in there to protect 
protect that nine o'clock base. He takes out the Marines at the nine o'clock, but now Zero has got to position his lurkers, get a nice defense on. And if he can defend, I think he's going to be okay. Flash building three factories. <laughs> oh, Flash. Yeah, Flash wants to end the games early today. He's going to be going for, actually this is pretty typical of Flash as of late, to build factories to back up uh, his very aggressive medic and marines. Of course, he's not usually this aggressive off of this many barracks, but building three more factories means he's just going to keep pushing troops, pushing troops, as much damage as he possibly can, almost snipes, he does snipe a lurker before backing off. With his troops, I mean, uh, Flash's anti-lurker micro is just insane sometimes. So Zero has got to keep a lot of lurkers together and keep them from being surrounded. If he can do that, I think he's going to be okay as far as his defense goes. But yeah, he's sneaking in there with his lurkers now. He has about four, actually five that I see, and a few more eggs were morphing out in the middle of the uh, map. So uh, he's going to keep Flash at bay for the time being. Uh, just watching Flash's... Marines with the medics right next to them healing them always makes me nervous because I always think he's going to attack Now oh, you might all oh, every time I see that I think he's going to attack but flash deciding not to attack just yet uh, There are four lurkers there and flash if he does get enough reinforcements I think he'll be able to do something there But now sneaking in with vultures to get vulture harassment of that nine o'clock and it was pretty effective vulture harassment too Saw a lot of blood splatters from the drones So zero might want to think about throwing down some sunken colonies to, uh, to not only protect his 9 o'clock, but pr to protect his natural expansion as well, because I have no doubt that Flash is going to attack both with his vultures. But now Zero has grouped up all of his troops, ev all every single one of his troops here for a big pincer attack, getting as close as he possibly can with these lurkers. Nice attack there from Zero. Uh, fending Flash off, at least making him back up a little bit, but he's got to not... Oh man, he's got to keep all of those uh, mutilists alive as Flash, oh man, Flash grouping up quite a few vultures. I think most of those um, factories were just, I think they all are for uh, vultures. I haven't seen a single tank yet from Flash, but yeah, a lot of harassment. No sunken colonies. Flash is going to have a field day here with these vultures. Ridiculous. I can't believe that Zero didn't have some kind of defense here, at least some Sim City to protect himself a little bit against this. But yeah, he just look at the economy he lost. Pre lost all of his mining drones at this natural expansion. That's going to hurt Zero so much. Not to mention that uh, Flash has already snuck some vultures inside the main to kill these drones as well. Extremely effective harassment, and he's just Flash is a whirlwind right now. Just it has medic marines everywhere, has uh, vultures everywhere, and being a, as aggressive as he possibly can to lock down Zero. And he's trying to get a surround of these lurkers, losing a little bit too much in the process, a little bit too cavalier. But I see exactly what Flash is trying to do. He knows Zero's strength. Zero's strength is mid game massive unit control. Uh, you can see that very easily in most of his. Versus Protoss games. He, when he has a lot of troops, uh, that is when he really performs because he can multitask like crazy when it comes to unit control. So Flash, I think, knows that. Uh, that's how Zero works in versus Terran, too. He'll try to get as many bases as he can and just massively out pump the Terran player. Massive unit control. And Flash is trying to lock that down by being so aggressive early, keeping those extra bases from coming up, and uh, keeping Zero losing troops so he isn't able to get out a massive amount of them. Now, he does have a few lurkers left in the middle, doing a little bit of extra sniping with these mutas, but I don't think that Zero's uh, pumping any more mutas. Any more mutas? Uh, I think he probably should pump a few more mutas because I haven't seen a science vessel or anything out uh, for Flash yet. He did, he did devote a lot of minerals, a lot of gas to getting out more factories, and obviously to support his barracks. And he's still on two bases, so Flash is still a big presence, but he's not going to have enough for science vessels yet. So, oh man, I. <laughs> I have no idea what Flash is thinking. He's building an armory, and he does have four factories going off of these two bases. I think he has actually floating down a command center, down to the 3 o'clock position. I see a building floating down. I can only assume it's the command center, because I saw that being built earlier, I believe. But now, lurkers are everywhere for Zero, but he's got to protect his bases from more harassment. Flash is lining up vultures for more harassment. Actually, Flash is getting into his science facility now, but it might just be for upgrades. Yeah, the observers are pointing out that he does not have a starport landed, which means that probably is just for upgrades uh, for all of his troops. But oh man, Flash sneaking into this main again. Zero, zero, zero. You've got to put down some sunkens. 
has to put down Sunkins to protect his natural and his main because he's lost way too many drones in this game. I mean, I'm sure he saw it coming with the, oh, fla Flash floating off all of his barracks, which means he's going for mech. I see the Goliaths already, so Flash is switching into a mech build. <laughs> now that he has his third base, Flash is like, eh, why the hell not? Mech! I'm going mech. So Flash is going to go for Goliaths and tanks coming in here, trying to surround these uh, lurkers. Getting as close as he possibly can, losing probably too many troops, but he does have one tank at the back, and that is making all the difference since he's able to stay out of range of the lurkers and still attack them at the same time. He lost about half of his troop, but it was pretty much worth it uh, to grind down the lurker troop. There are only about three lurkers left, which means Flash will have a lot more maneuverability outside of the main bases of Zero. And I've never seen this kind of aggressiveness from Flash before. He's just non-stop onslaught. Man, uh, Flash, a lot of people consider Flash like a super defensive player, super boring player, but he is really ripping it up in this series so far. Getting as many production abilities as he can. Look at all these factories from Flash. He's just going to go straight into uh, tanks and Goliaths. Probably a lot more voltage for harassment as well, since it's worked out so well in this game so far. Finally, some Dark Swarm from Zero, but it could be a bit too late. It's going to be hard to fight back the Siege tanks. Those are going to be the biggest factor, because the Siege tanks obviously can splash under the Dark Swarm, and Zero desperately needs a fourth base. Uh, for his style of play. I mean, it's just zero style of play to have that many bases. And working off of three, that's more of a Jadong thing. <laughs> that's more of a any other Zerg kind of thing than zero. Zero does need quite a few bases to make use of uh, his strength, as I mentioned earlier. But now Flash is roving around with these vultures again. Tr he's going to try to go in for another run by to take out more drones. Might be successful this time. Oh, God. Zero, please tell me you're building... Some sunken colonies, something to protect your natural in Maine. Of course, he just might be using lurkers to do that right now. But Flash is grouping up with some vultures. Very quick reaction from Flash, though, to take out as many zirklings as he can and then probably skirt out of there. But no, he's coming in with the Goliaths. The Goliaths do not have the Charon upgrade yet, but I believe they will soon. As Flash is going to work up a larger number of Goliaths, this is going to be an extremely scary tech switch of zero... Zero, no! <laughs> this is hurting my heart and my soul. I mean, I like both of these players equally, but this is just painful to watch. Zero just... He has no response for this whatsoever. He's saying, well, hopefully it won't happen this time. Hopefully he won't sneak by again for the umpteenth time to snipe more drones. But no, Flash did sneak by, and now it looks like... Yeah, uh, Zero has switched into Hydralis, switching into a Hydralis army to deal with this mech switch. But as I said, he's still on three bases. Zero cannot support himself much longer on these three. So he has to get a fourth, he has to get a fourth, he has to devote all of his time and energy to taking that fourth, since Flash, God, Flash has been macroing up this entire time. This blows my mind, because I don't even remember this base down here. But Flash is building turrets, down at the 5 o'clock position, which magically popped up. Plus, he's taking the natural down at the 5 o'clock. Why the hell not? Let's take as many bases as we want against the Zerg. He's going to stay at 3. It's okay. Oh, zero. What the hell? Zero. Mutas. Oh, it's a bad day to be a Muta. Look at that. Mutas all die for absolutely no reason whatsoever, other than to give uh, Zero a little bit of scouting information so he can look down at the mini-map and say, Oh, I'm screwed. Hooray. Scouting information. Oh no, Zero still doesn't have any sunken colonies at his 9 o'clock. So this is being harassed yet again. Flash fans in the audience going crazy. But oh man, this is just... I, honestly, this is very painful to watch. Flash is taking Zero to school. And I don't think that Flash... Uh, well, Zero rather, is going to be able to catch up in this game. Just look at how many bases that Flash has now. Ridiculous! And Zero so far has not been able to do anything about it. No harassment whatsoever on Flash as he's just macroing up, taking the entire right side of the map, including the top, and I think he's taking the 10 o'clock at the same time. So he's going to have three-fourths of the map soon as he's just tightening the noose on Zero. I, this was pretty one-sided, this game. This is kind of ridiculous, but as Zero is going to give it the old college try, try to break out of the situation. Uh, he has to take a fourth base. He should have had one by now, but he needs one, desperately needs that fourth base right now. 
And he, I think he's going to try to do a drop to do this. He's moving out with three overlords, probably full of troops, to do a drop. This might be at the 10 o'clock position, I'm not sure, but the Dark Swarm helping out the Hydralists a lot. So that's going to fend Flash back to the high ground, but Flash does have the high ground with all of his tanks to get the splash. So no telling what his plan is going to be there. But now Zero, I think, is going for a drop. I'm not sure where he's going to drop. He's moving over to the 12 o'clock position, which Flash has not taken yet. Uh, he just has a barracks floated over there, which is why I thought he was taking that earlier. But he might build a base there soon, but it's forced to drop. Zero drops here. I think he was expecting a base here, but uh, forced to drop anyway because of all the Goliaths that were in the area. But now he's coming down here, trying to take out as many tanks as he can. The tanks are the critical target that he's got to focus on. Since so Flash, I, I have no idea how many factories that Flash has now. He has a hell of a lot inside of his main, and he has a bunch down at the 5 o'clock position. So I'd say at least 8 or 10 factories going now for Flash. It's just going to be insanely scary, especially once he starts getting his upgrades from that armory. I'm going to have to look at the upgrades soon. I see the um, Air Carapace, interestingly enough, on that. Oh, Queens! Yes, of course! Of course, Queens! Uh, I should have mentioned that earlier. The King of Queens, Zero. I was expecting to see Queens. I was glad that we're finally seeing them, but it could be a little bit too late. Uh, Zero's going to have to do some... He's going to have to pull off some miracles here because going for this many Queens, obviously, was a big commitment, big mineral and uh, gas commitment. Going for the Broodling upgrade, he's going to try to Broodling all of the tanks. Wow, it's a lot of Queens. Man, like a control group of Queens for Zero. So uh, this is a pretty big gamble, although not that, that much of a gamble, really, because he's falling so far behind in this game. He needs something special to get back in the game. Nothing more special than a control group of queens. Oh, boy. So the King of Queens is going to try to broodling every single one of the tanks and take back this game. And if he pulls off Dark Swarms and uh, attacks with Hydralis effectively enough, he might be able to wiggle his way back into this game. But, man, just the amount of bases for Flash. Flash is running very well on his macro. He's going to be able to pump, continuously pump troops, and it's just going to be a nightmare for Zero if he can't do a lot of excellent guerrilla attacks out there in the middle of the map. Now, of course, he's waiting for the Broodling Energy to get done on the Queens. And once he has that, he's probably going to attack with every single one of them at the same time. But he's got to keep Flash at bay until that happens. It's going to be extremely difficult to defend since he devoted all of his larvae, all of his gas and minerals to these Queens. That was a big investment uh, when it could have, could have done something like Mutalis to help support the, the Hydralis. But, of course, uh, the Queens are kind of the one shot. You're paying for Scourge, basically, to take down... Uh, one unit. Pay for one unit, take down one unit. And to, uh, oh man, Fla uh, Zero is actually taking down some troops. He took down a few of the troops that were inside of the middle, and he took down a few of these troops that are trying to attack the 9 o'clock position. But now Zero is moving up with these queens. I, th I do think that he has the energy just about ready on these things. He's coming up, brutaling of the tanks, brutaling as many tanks as he possibly can. Oh, gets a lot of them. But still, he's only working from three bases. Wasn't able to take that fourth. And Flash still pushing forward. Oh, man, he's going to lose all these tanks. <laughs> to the Broodlings. Oh, man. So Flash, he has some troops left. And Zero is still on three bases. But luckily, the Broodlings are going to attack the tanks. Get over here, tanks. Broodlings, the lesser Ling of the Zerglings. The Diet Coke of Lings. But here comes Flash. Oh, yeah, there's... There's almost no troops left for Zero. Yep, there's the GG from Zero. GG's as soon as Broodling, he Broodling saw Flash's tanks. It would have taken way too long to regenerate the Broodling energy to try something like that again. So, yep, taps out. Didn't have the troops to defend his natural and his main, which is where all the important buildings were. So Flash up two, putting himself one game away from tying Nada's record. So epic. Okay, let's move on to the third set.